Enki, and Ninma. What you're looking at is a Sumerian scribe. Could be anywhere from five, six, seven, eight thousand years old, maybe even older. And this could be a translation from a previous scribe that could be even older than that. It's a fascinating article of antiquity. And I want to give credit to the scholars from Oxford University. You can see the project members here. I'll leave a link in the video description box. I think these guys did a really good job deciphering this. This is a very interesting scripture. So I'll go ahead and read it to you now. Enki and Ninma. In those days, in the days when heaven and earth were created, in those nights, in the nights when heaven and earth were created, in those years, in the years when the fates were determined, when the Anuna gods were born, when the goddesses were taken in marriage, when the goddesses were distributed in heaven and earth, when the goddesses became pregnant and gave birth, when the gods were obliged, their food, dining halls, the senior gods oversaw the work while the minor gods were bearing the toil. The gods were digging the canals and piling up the silt and Harali, the gods crushing the clay, began complaining about this life. At that time, the one of great wisdom, the creator of all the senior gods, Enki, lay on his bed, not waking up from his sleep, in the deep Engur, in the subterranean water, the place, the inside of which no other god knows, the god said, weeping. He is the cause of the lamenting, Nama, the primeval mother who gave birth to the senior gods, took the tears of the gods to the one who lay sleeping, to the one who did not awake, up from his bed to her son. Are you really lying there asleep and not awake? The gods, your creatures, are smashing there. My son, wake up from your bed. Please apply the skill deriving from your wisdom and create a substitute for the gods so that they can be freed from their toil. At the word of his mother, Nama, Anki rose up from his bed. In Halan Kug, his room for pondering, he slapped his thigh in annoyance. The wise and intelligent one, the prudent, reached out his arm over them and turned his attention to them. And after Anki, the fashioner of designs by himself, had pondered the matter, he said to his mother, Nama, my mother, the creature you planned will really come into existence. Impose on him the work of carrying baskets. You should knead clay from the top of the Abzu. The birth goddesses will nip off the clay, and you shall bring the form into existence. Let Ninma act as your assistant, and let Ninma, Suziana, Ninmada, Ninbarag, Ninmug, and Ninguna stand by you as you give birth. My mother, after you have decreed his fate, let Ninma impose on him the work of carrying baskets. There's some lines that are fragmentary. Then it says, she placed it on grass and purified the birth. Enki brought joy to their hearts. He set a feast for his mother, Nama, and for Ninma, all the princely birth goddesses ate delicate reed and bread. And Enlil and Lord Nunamud roasted holy kids. Wait, time out. Let's, whoa. Let's repeat that. And Enlil and Lord Nunamud roasted holy kids. What does that mean? Like roasted over a fire? Like chestnuts? What in the world does that mean? I hope that roasted has a different definition and a different meaning than that. I, what is it? I mean, there's dozens of passages in the Bible that talk about God enjoying the smell of flesh, of burning flesh and incense. And Enlil is Yahweh of the Old Testament. Is this literally 
Were they roasting kids? What does that mean? I hope I'm wrong there. Enlil and Lord Nudamud roasted holy kids. All the senior gods praised him, O Lord of wide understanding, who is as wise as you. Who is as wise as you, Enki? The great Lord who can equal your actions. Who can equal your actions? Like a corporal father, you are the one who has the me of deciding destinies. In fact, you are the me. Enki and Ninma drank beer. Their hearts became elated, and then Ninma said to Enki, Man's body can be neither good or bad, and whether I make a fate good or bad depends on my will. Enki answered Ninma, I will counterbalance whatever fate, good or bad, you happen to decide. Ninma took clay from the top of the Abzu in her hand, and she fashioned from it first a man who could not bend his outreached weak hands. Enki looked at the man who cannot bend his out stretched weak hands and decreed his fate he appointed him as a servant of the king second she fashioned one who turned back the light a man with constantly opened eyes enki looked at the who turned back the light the man who constantly opened eyes and decreed his fate allotting to it the musical arts making him as the chief in the king's presence Third, she fashioned one with both feet broken, one with paralyzed feet. Enki looked at the one with both feet broken, the one with paralyzed feet, and him for the work of, and the silversmith, and. She fashioned one, a third one, born as an idiot. Enki looked at this one, the one born as an idiot, and decreed his fate he and him, and him. as a servant of the king. Well, there you go. Things haven't changed much, have they? Nanu, 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 nanu. Fourth, she fashioned one who could not hold back his urine. Enki looked at the one who could not hold back his urine and bathed him in enchanted water and drove out the Namtar demon from his body. Fifth, she fashioned a woman who could not give birth. Enki looked at the woman who could not give birth and decreed her fate. He made her belong to the queen's household as a weaver fashioned her to belong to the queen's household. Sixth, she fashioned one with neither penis nor vagina on its body. Hmm. Enki looked at the one with neither penis nor vagina on its body and gave it the name Nibru Inuk and decreed as its fate to stand before the king. Well, that's interesting. Named it Nibru Inuk. Nibru Inuk. Or Nibru Iunuk. Iunuk. Nibru Iunuk. Got no privates? Bizarre. That's weird. And decreed as its fate to stand before the king. Ninma threw the pinched off clay from her hand on the ground and a great silence fell. Enki threw all the clay to the ground and was greatly, it's missing some words there. The great Lord Enki said to Ninma, I have decreed the fates of your creatures and given them their daily bread. Come now, I will fashion somebody for you and you must decree the fate of the newborn one. Enki devised a shape with head and mouth in its middle and said to Ninma, Pour ejaculated semen into a woman's womb, and the woman will give birth to the semen of her womb. Ninma stood by for the newborn, and the woman brought forth in the midst. In return, this was a mule. Its head was afflicted, its place of was afflicted, its eyes were afflicted, its neck was afflicted, it could hardly breathe, its ribs were shaky, its lungs were afflicted, its heart was afflicted, its bowels were afflicted. With its hand and its lolling head, it could not put bread into its mouth. Its spine and head were dislocated. The weak hips and the shaky feet could not carry it on the field. Enki fashioned it in this way. Enki said, no, time out, let's go back. Think about the grays. 
the the big heads, the frail bodies. Think about the weird genetic genetic testing that's been going on that we know about at least since the 30s with weird animal genetic manipulations. Look at the demiurge petroglyphs, hieroglyphs, ancient Sumerian scribes, antiquities that portray and talk about genetic manipulation of human, animal, etc. It's right here. They're talking about their failed experiments right here. And it also talks about their, you know, deci- they're deciding who, what their fate is, what their creation's fate is, and each one. That's, that's scary if you think about it, if that's true. You know, how much truth is in that? Well, there's got to be quite a bit because they're putting DNA, and your DNA has a huge impact on your fate. Not everything, but it has a huge impact on it. So I get where they're going with this. And he said to Ninma, for your creatures, I have decreed a fate. I have given them their daily bread. Now you should decree a fate for my creature. Give him his daily bread too. Ninma looked at Amul and turned to him. She went nearer to Amul, asked him questions, but he could not speak. She offered him bread to eat, but he could not reach out for it. He could not lie on. He could not... Standing up, he could not sit down, could not lie down, he could not a house, he could not eat bread. Ninma answered Enki, the man you have fashioned is neither alive nor dead, he cannot support himself. Enki answered Ninma, I decreed a fate for the first man with weak hands, I gave him bread. I decreed a fate for the man who turned back the light, I gave him bread. I decreed a fate for the man who broke in paraly- with broken paralyzed feet, I gave him bread. I decreed a fate for the man who could not hold back his urine. I gave him bread. (laughs) I was about to say something. I'll leave it out. I decreed a fate for the woman who could not give birth. I gave her bread. I decreed the fate for the one with neither penis nor vagina on its body. I gave it bread, my sister. Ninma answered Enki. Ninma Answer continues, you entered? Look, you do not dwell in heaven. You do not dwell on earth. You do not come out to look at the land where you do not dwell, but where my house is built. Your words cannot be heard where you do not live, but where my city is built. I myself am silenced. My city is ruined. My house is destroyed. My child has been taken captive. I am a fugitive who has had to leave the Ikur because... Even I myself could not escape from your hand. Enki replied to Ninma, Who could change the words that left your mouth? Remove Amul from your lap. Ninma, may your work be you. For me, what is imperfect, who can oppose this? The man whom I shaped after you, let him pray. Today let my penis be praised. May your wisdom be confirmed. May the Incum and Ninkum proclaim your glory, my sister, the heroic strength, the song, the writing, the gods who heard. Let Amul build my house. Build my house. Ninma could not rival the great Lord Enki. Father Enki, your praise is sweet. So let's go back to what was just said there. That was uh, kind of erotic. Today let my penis be praised. May your wisdom be confirmed. And he's saying that to his his mom? Or his concubine or his wife? Okay. Wow. Anyway, so when you see these giant phalluses, you know, like the Washington, D.C. monument, and much of the Hollywood symbolism of the giant phallus being showed off as a representation of strength. And they've even got it in all sorts of stuff that it shouldn't be in. I mean, you, you see them in cartoons. You see them in a lot of... I saw it in a, uh, they, they had these gummy-shaped... They looked like the shape of a penis. Miley Cyrus gummies. And... That's my opinion. If you look at it, you tell me what you think it looks like. It doesn't look like a pyramid. Hello. 
then I read this text that is older than what you read in the Holy Bible. It's older than scriptures from the Nag Hammadi. This is an old scribe. This could be easily 6,000 years old or older, and it's based probably off of scribes previous to this. So how far does this go back? And what's your take on this? What are they doing now as far as genetic manipulation? People, some people think that they haven't been able to clone humans and, and create this transhuman movement. I disagree. I think they're doing it on a daily basis. I think they have for years. I think vaccines and GMO foods and the media and the education system is enough to prove that they've already done it. To what extent, how far are they going to be able to go? Well, we'll find out. Time's going to tell on that. And you are the one that's going to... Ladies and gentlemen, those that are listening to this podcast, each and every one of you has the opportunity to decide what you want the future to be for yourself, for your family, for your friends, for your future generations. It's your decision. It's not theirs. Quit giving them the power. The more you mentally give up and unplug, it starts from the thought, ladies and gentlemen. Remember that. This physical form is a very dense vibration of thought at a much higher level. So question everything. Be the change you want to see. LeakProject.com Enki and Ninmah.